Okay, boys and girls, I will demonstrate the Excel functions of your project. You will not get the same numbers because everyone has different data. Task 1. Distribute your land into your eight countries. As mentioned in class, you're not distributing land, you're distributing the percentage of land. So I'm going to just put in some percentages for my land. 0.4. Oops, look at that. I went over 1. So clearly, I cannot go over 1, 0 0.4, 0 0.23. Okay, so I'm at 0 0.92, because I need to get to 0 0.1. So I can go 0 0.4, 0 0.03, and 0 0.01. Okay, look at that. 100% of the data has now been distributed into our cities. For my water, well, not every town is going to have water, so as long as I say that 0.3 is here, 0.4 is here, and 0.3 is here, everything else can be zero. Some of your data may not have water because of your country. Some of you may have water. It depends on the country that you have. Okay, so now this is all done, and as you can see, we have 1% representing 100% of the data distributed into our cities. The next two tasks will require you to draw. When you draw, make sure to denote the land boundaries and coastline. Notice that here the coastline is about half of the land. So when I draw my drawing, I need to denote that some of my boundary, my perimeter, will have coastline, meaning water. The rest of my boundary will be connected to other countries. Your teacher has given you the formulas already, and as you can see, just from step task one, we have our land and water that must be demonstrated in our drawing. Phase two, and everyone has different data, I have given myself different data, will require a simple Excel function. We remember percentages of total land would be equal land times percentage, enter. And then we can just drag this across, done. We can do the same here, enter, percentage, multiplied. Multiplied by the land, enter, do the same thing here, drag it all across. And we're going to do the same thing here. Enter the percentage times the land. Enter. And then we're just going to drag across right there, just like that. Okay, so we've done task four, applying the Excel functions. Now is the tricky part. Now we need to use the data that we have, copy, paste, in here. And as a result, we now need to make a stacked bar chart. Notice carefully. I want the discrete data value to be within the stacked bar chart. So I will highlight my countries and my data. I will not highlight on the left, and you will see why. I'm going to go to here, click on the bar chart, which will give me this, but that's not what we want. I want a, and for your project, a stacked bar chart. Problem being, I want the stacked bar chart to represent the value on the inside. So let's go through that again. Uh, one sec. I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to highlight my data, the percentages of my land. Yeah. Only the percentages of my land. And I'm going to take this out. And you'll see why. It will just make everything a lot cleaner. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click. And I am now going to switch the rows. But that's not what we want. We want not a column, a stacked bar chart. 100% stacked, as you can see. 100% stacked column chart. Problem being, I don't have the labels. So I need to click. And we know that the first one, the yellow, is going to represent, as it says right here, agriculture. So I'm going to click right here and say that it needs to represent agriculture. Right here, blue, agriculture. So I'm going to click on, oops, I clicked on yellow. 
I'm going to click on blue. Okay, it's clicking on yellow anyway. I can type in other for other landforms. Okay, this one is supposed to be agriculture. Blue is agriculture. Red is going to be forest because it's in the order that it got red. And yellow is going to represent other. Yeah, other. So now we have our stacked bar chart. And all I have to do is copy, control C, and post it into task five, the bar chart right here. Uh, paste unlinked, paste. There we go. Scale it down. And we have our stacked bar chart. And that is done. Okay, let's see what else do we have to do. I'm just going to delete this for the purpose of the video. So task six requires data distribution of the box and whisker plot. You all have different data. But as we learned in class, and as you have on your Brightspace, we can always, even though you have to do it by paper, we can always find yeah, the elements by highlighting the data and using the Excel formulas. As you can see here, I've given the min, the max, I need to find lower quartile, low Q, and I need to find high Q. All right, so my lower quartile will be equal quartile. Highlight the data as it says in, uh, whoops. Okay, uh, quartile brackets, right, brackets. Highlight the data, put a comma, and one to denote lower quartile. Where is my higher quartile? Well, I'm gonna do the same thing. Equals quartile, open brackets. Highlight the data, put a comma, three, close brackets, and the last thing we need to know is the median. You have these equations available to you on Brightspace. Equals median, open brackets, highlight the data. This is a process to help me verify that I have done it correctly on paper. Remember, any task that is in yellow, like task six, like task seven, or task two and task three, will require you to use paper and take the picture to be uploaded to your presentation. Task two and three, you can take a picture and upload your drawing. Just as we did task six, you will do on paper and you will upload a drawing. Look how beautiful that I can check my answers on task six by doing the Excel formulas. I can even do it for task seven by doing equals standard deviation stand stdv yeah brackets and i can highlight my data close brackets and when i do my process see if i get the same answer as it tells me in excel okay so that is phase one land distribution done phase two well, very similar, apply Excel formulas. The percentage to be distributed times the percentage right here, uh, whoops, equals, yeah. And the problem being, I can't, I'm gonna do equals that times, and this is just a special note, C comma eight, to denote that it's fixed. And I just drag it down. And here is the problem. I will be grading if you, you cannot have 0.47 of a person. It doesn't exist. So what you will do is you need to highlight, and this is going to be the graded part on this section, and decrease the decimal twice. Ah, now we have a whole number to represent the data. Perfect. Just as we did earlier, all you have to do is do the percentages. Make sure you do not get past one. It needs to be exactly one. So I'm going to put 12% here. I'm going to put 20% here, 30% here. Uh-huh, 0 0.08. Okay, what are we at? 0 0.08. Let's do that again. 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. Okay, so I have now distributed my data. 
and my population for 0 to 14. Let's do the same here. I am now going to, in the percentages, I am going to type in 0 0.1, 0 0.04, 0 0.16, 0 0.18, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. What are we at? 0 0.88, so I could put 0 0.02 here. We can put 0 0.04 here, 0 0.04 here again. Okay, so now we have, oops, look at that, 0 0.09. I need to add 2% of my population. There we go. Now we have all of the population distributed. Now let's look at the second one. 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.08, 0 0.04, 0 0.09. And that gives 0.18 of a population right here. And 55 to 64, we're going to do the same. 0 0.12, 0 0.12, 0 0.12. Uh, let's put 0 0.2 here. Let's put 0 0.5 here. Oops, I've already passed. I can't do 0 0.5 because that's above 1. So I'm going to do 0 0.05. Then I'm going to do 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Okay, what are we at? 0.65, so I could put 0.2 here, which leaves 0.15 of my population there. Okay, now let's do 65 plus. 0.12, 0.04, 0.06, 0.07, 0.08, 0.09, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 
let's also yeah put the legend in I'm going to do this just you don't have to but you're more than welcome to chart and access titles uh, we're going to okay here we go um, grid lines and ticks horizontal axis okay so now we have done the biggest city I'm going to copy this so control C I'm then going to move it over what is my biggest city well my biggest city paste it right here uh, wait a second we didn't copy it okay uh-huh control C all right now I'm just going to go to Excel and paste it here and I'm going to say paste unlinked which will give me boom yeah my chart excellent now let's see about the smallest city let's go back here I don't need this it's already in my spreadsheet so now the smallest city which we calculated was city 6 I'm going to copy that over here city 6 and well the problem being is that I put in function so I'm just going to do that uh -huh. whoops I'm just going to enter type in that 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 enter okay so we have city six and I'm going to do the same process of highlight the data click on it right there and well that's not what we want we want part we want this and it's not versus let's make the title correct you will be graded on this if you do not provide a accurate title yeah and to center that for purposes of conformity and there we go okay so city six is done and I'm going to copy this so control X and I'm going to paste it into my smallest city in Excel right here control V oh geez okay I need to sometimes make sure that I copy it correctly control C and now control V there we go that should appear paste chart uh, it's one of those Google functions okay and that is done so task 10 is done I can now get rid of this okay uh, task 11 evaluate the northern hemisphere as we've learned in class and as you have in your right space notes all you have to do is mean brackets and everyone has different data here so you can't copy enter okay whoops uh, we made an error right here C 62 M 60 yeah let's type that in one more time equals mean open brackets highlight the data close brackets and and as you can see I made a small error which should be equals average because in the function we don't do mean we do average which is the same meaning and I just have to type in median open brackets and there we go I'm just going to repeat that process over and over and as you can see look at that it gives us autofill and we say yeah sure autofill it for us and it's going to ask us here and we could say autofill absolutely look at your notes look at your notes because it's in there if the mean is bigger than the median it's either skewed right or left depending skewed left median is bigger than the mean well right here the mean is clearly bigger than the median 42 27 so we can say that this is skewed right and then you would have to analyze which number is bigger than the other in this case I would say with 56 and 52 being so close together they are nearly symmetrical okay and then you would do the same process for task 11 and then you would do it by analyzing the southern hemisphere in task 12 remember if the task is in yellow you have to do it on paper just like earlier task 13 and task 14 have to be done on paper on paper you have to do the mean variance and standard deviation last task once you analyze the cultural elements between the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere you have to write about 
the difference between the two. What's the difference between the bell curve and the box plot? What do the two data sets tell you? And with that, you're done with your project. So I hope this video of doing the Excel for you has been useful. If you need anything, I'm always in office hours. Ciao, ciao.